This week has been crazy with the amount of camera tech that has dropped. Sony take AF to Hollywood, the Hollywood lens maker Cook enter the mirrorless market, Panasonic might have just released a new value king when it comes to video, and finally we get the new Blackmagic cinema camera. But is it what we actually want? I've been obsessed with filmmaking and video creation equipment for over a decade now. But let me tell you, this week is definitely one I'm going to remember. I just wanted to quickly mention that there is so much more equipment launched for IBC this week, but I just picked the stuff that seemed the most interesting to me. So make sure you're subbed and let's get into it. First on the list is the Sony Burano. As always, when I start talking about a new camera, there is no such thing as the perfect 8.6K full frame Venice sensor. E mount and PL mount. Small, more compact body, lightweight, similar in size to an FX6. What about the codex? Definitely some negatives in there. It's own 16 bit raw internal codec. Okay, but what about internal NDs? Variable electronic NDs, same as what's in the Sony FX6. Ah, but when you have NDs, you can't have IBIS. The first large sensor camera to have NDs and IBIS. It's got Sony's best in class autofocus. In all seriousness, there is definitely more to a camera than what is wrote on a spec sheet, but goddamn, this thing is as close to perfection as I have read before. This is something that I could seriously see shaking up the industry. The Venice did an amazing job at stealing market share from Ari when it comes to filming big, massive Hollywood productions. I think this one is just gonna take that even further. It reminds me of when Ari released the Alexa Mini, and it was like, this is a drone slash gimbal cam. And it's going to be the perfect B cam to the original Alexa classic. But all it did was totally destroy the Alexa. They just did not leave enough reason for people to use the original Alexa. I can see this being something really similar when it comes to the Venice. I even think the big Hollywood people won't see much point in using the Venice. I know it has a few better features when it comes to anamorphic shooting, but I also did hear that Sony could be adding them in the firmware update. And for the first time in a while, I actually think that Sony could steal a lot more shooters from Ari. This makes sense on an indie level production all the way up to the biggest and very best productions on planet Earth. So this camera is obviously going to be extremely popular. If I had to say some negatives about this camera, I'm not even sure, but the price point it's coming in at, it's definitely something you want to be hiring in before purchasing. Uh, so I can't wait for my local hire house to get one of these in so I can get it on a production, find out what's good and bad about it and put this thing to goddamn work. Next up is the Cook SP3 lenses. Now Cook make my favorite lenses I've ever used and I've always said they're my favorite lens of all time. Just from the DPs that have used them, the movies that I've seen shot on them and my own personal experience I've shot from using Cook lenses. I really have an obsession with the Cook S4i primes. Whenever I get a budget, I get those in. I love to use them on the original Alexa. I love to use them on my Ursa Mini Pro G2. They just have a really cool way of dealing with skin tones. They like remove the shine from lights and make the skin look really matte. So when I first seen that Cook was bringing out a small compact lens set that was built for mirrorless cameras, it definitely had my attention. Cook themselves claim that you can get the Cook look out of these lenses, what would just be incredible with their size and even price point. Coming in at around 4K per lens is incredibly cheap for what we have had to pay to get that cook look before now so i'm super interested in testing these out again at the price point for a full set it makes way more sense to hire these in before i go purchasing anything but it has been a dream of mine to own a set of cut lenses i'm gonna wait for my local hire house to get them in get them in on a project and see how they perform but these make me really excited to shoot what's always a good thing black magic cinema camera 6k now anyone who's watched my channel before will know that I have owned every single Blackmagic camera since the original. Here we are, back round, and now the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. Where do I even start? This is the most Blackmagic release ever. From the live stream itself to just pulling out products from underneath the desk, it was just also Blackmagic is the way I describe it. I did read that Grant and all the team stay up till like 3 a.m. to stream those events. Just so all those at the Western side of the world can enjoy them at normal time. So we have to give them some credit for that. Even down to the promo images. Is that a ladder? So let's start with the name. We are back at Blackmagic Design Cinema Camera. All the way back round to where we first started. Can't just be that simple because it is actually an identical body to the recent cameras that are called Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Cameras. So we've got no body change, no design. We've changed a sensor and added some features 
that totally changed the name of the camera itself. We finally have a full frame sensor inside a Blackmagic camera that is amazing news. And even better, they're allowing us to shoot open gate or give us the full sensor size. That's amazing for shooting like anamorphic or vertical content. You know, if you want to crop into images, you just got that more real estate. We even get an amazing new mirrorless mount in the L mount. So now we can adapt to our old EF glass really easily. And we can also adapt to PL mount really easily if we want to put some fancier lenses on there. The cost of adding these new features is we have lost our internal ND filters. We have also taken a hit significantly in the frame rate department. When we was all hoping that Blackmagic would take the 2K 120 frames to 4K 120 frames, they took it to 1080. So now if you're wanting 120 frames per second, like super slow-mo, you're back down to full HD. It's just like for every amazing new feature they added, they've taken one away. Here's an amazing new faster media, but now you've only got one slot instead of two. Here's an amazing OLPF filter built in the camera, but we've taken away ND filters built in the camera. Here's an amazing full frame sensor, so your guys can get better low light and more depth for your images but we've taken away frame rates. The one massive positive that I'm going to say about this is all else aside, without looking at spec sheets and features and what it does do and doesn't do, the footage looks incredible from this. I must say, I did download some from Blackmagic's website this morning. My resolve would not recognize the footage. I had to do an update, but once updated, it allowed me to import the footage. It's just classic Blackmagic with the filmic colors and the not overly sharp look what we all absolutely love and it's just great to see this in like open gate in a full frame camera. All of this iPhone app and record the cloud stuff, while I'm sure it matters to someone out there, I think there's a big majority of people who just don't care about this and don't want to record the cloud. If I take a positive angle on it, this is really exciting to see them finally get onto a mirrorless mount, finally faster media types. We've got our first full frame sensor. I can't wait to see where Blackmagic take this next. I can see like a new Ursa Mini design that's smaller, lighter, with a shorter flange distance. That'd be fantastic. I could also see like a pro version of the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. This naming is just beyond the joke at this point. I'm gonna quickly go over some other stuff that come out this week that I thought was really cool and definitely worth mentioning. First is a Panasonic Lumic G9 II. I love the look of this thing. They've moved it into the body of the S5 II, what I'm shooting on right now. They've added the phase detect autofocus and taking that to the next level. Love that from Lumix. They've added like car detection, better animal detection. They've added a mode that selects one face in a crowded uh, environment. Now, if you've seen my video on autofocus, you'll know that I state that as a massive problem with Lumix autofocus. It basically looks like a cheaper, lighter, smaller S5 Mark II. So I'm desperately trying to get my hands on one of these. Hopefully I can get that in soon. Run tests against this camera I'm shooting on right now and see what the differences actually are. Fujifilm's GFX 100 Mark II. Now, I never got a chance to use the Mark I of this, but medium format, the sensor just looks incredibly massive on all the promo images. I think this could be like a real underdog slept on camera for video, as the footage, what I've been looking at online, looks incredible, as you can imagine, from a medium format sensor. Being up there around the $8,000 mark really puts it in there with some amazing video slash cinema cameras that they've got to compete with. But putting that aside, this thing looks quite amazing. The RS Sky Panel X. Why is everyone naming everything X? Who started it? Was it Apple? I suppose Elon had SpaceX, but now Twitter's X. It's just this newfound obsession with the letter X. This thing looks like a really cool concept. The whole idea is like modular design. It looks like the classic sky panels we all know and love, but you can like change the front element. You can have like a grid. You can have the normal like diffusion sheet on there. You can also get these lenses that turn soft light into hard light. This is like the invert of what we've been doing with like COB lights, where we've been getting hard source lights and using massive soft boxes to make them soft. This is like a soft light but with this modular design, you can make the light hard. I really love this concept. The only massive negative for this is because it's from Ara, it will cost an arm and a leg, and most people will not be able to own and operate this. So I guess we will just sit around until Aperture rip off the idea, probably make it a little bit better, and definitely make it more affordable. Have you guys guessed yet which one of them I placed an order on? Of course, it's the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. The toxic relationship between me and Blackmagic continues. Whether I'll be keeping this as my permanent camera or keeping my old 6K Pro with its built-in NDs, I'm not quite sure. I can't wait to get this in and run it in tests against the 6K Pro and against my Ursa Mini. 
see where the image quality sits and see if it's worth actually sacrificing all the things they've taken away. But of course, now we have the first ever L-mount Blackmagic camera. So if you are wondering what lenses work best for video work when it comes to L-mount, click here.